<laughs> All right, so the commission sheets. <laughs> okay, hold on, guys. So the commission sheets. Um, for an example, this is how Sarah does it, and it makes it really easy for me. They stay in order, just like those stay in order for the hourly. She has the date. It's Monday, 812, training. Here's my name up here. I'm John Smith. I didn't sell anything because I was in training. On Monday, from 7.30 to 8, today's the 8.12, it was a half an hour. I know it's training, I know it's Monday, I know everything I need to know about the first thing you did. It's kind of like a job because you're getting paid for this. The second thing, on 8.12, I went to Joni Trempolas. Here's the job number, here's my name. I didn't sell anything today because you don't sell it until it closes out. The day I collect and all that stuff is when it gets sold. I was there from 8 until 4 on Monday, 8-12, had a total of 8 hours, okay? Now, now let's say it's Tuesday and I'm closing out that job. Kevin sold it, right up here, I want Kevin sold, Brian sold, Sarah sold, whoever sold the job because they get paid also out of this, so I need to make sure it's on there. Now I have the total amount, the job was sold for $23,382. My parts were fifty-four twenty-seven. Helpers, total helpers was twelve sixty-five. Now the one thing I didn't put on here, which I'm gonna do right now, is I'm gonna write on the helper's name. I'm gonna say, okay, we had, let's say we had Jason, we had Jesse, and we had uh, Jim. It doesn't matter who it is on here. And they all worked nine hours. So right above their name, nine hours, and then the rate can be right underneath it, seventeen an hour. 20 an hour, 17 an hour. So in the helper's name, their name, their hours, and their rate. Okay? We worked from 8 to 5. It was a total of 9 hours. One of those hours was overtime. These sections here are really simple. Basically, if you take, if you take your materials number and times it times 1.5, that's, that's what that equals, 8,140 on the far right. The difference between this minus that is what this is, so you can see what our markup is. I'm not hiding anything from anybody, okay? Oh. Then the permit fee, there is no markup on permit, so it's still 250. Uh, other job costs, you know, that, that, could, that is the uh, commission in this particular case, that would be Kevin's commission, right? 10%, it gets marked up 1.5, so that's what that total is. This minus that equals that. That's what we're showing you. And again, I'm not hiding anything, so you can see what our markup is so that we everybody else gets paid that has to get paid, the office gets paid, etc. Labor markup, is that 1.3 or 1.35? 1 okay. Labor markup is 1.35. Um, everything else is 1.5 except for permits is not. Okay, and if you ever have a question on that, fine. But if you don't fill this out, I could care less. That's for you. <laughs> I don't, that automatically, is, I know that automatically. If you just fill this out here, that's all I really care about on commission. Because based on that, those numbers, that's how I plug in everything. Okay, but Sarah likes to put some of these numbers in most of the time because she knows here's my service volume. Because if you do that, this number here, obviously from the top, is going to be your service volume. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Then I'm also putting on here though. I work from eight to five, like I said. Here's a date. Here's that. Here's who worked with me. Pretty simple. And if it's filled out like that, and I know Kevin sold it, because I know that sometimes people forget this part, this part that's just 10% here. But if you forget that, then I have to go back and say, oh, crap, we didn't pay Kevin. i got to go back and, and do that. Okay, so that makes it challenging. So then now we're on Wednesday. That was Tuesday. So now we're on Wednesday, same thing, 814. We had training. Nothing was sold. I'm not getting any money on it. 7.30 to 8 in the morning on 14 and half an hour for training on Wednesday. <clears throat> then I did it on um, Wednesday, same thing. Now I have a $300 job for Cheryl and Naya. Here's my job number, my name. There's no material costs on this one. It's just I'm doing the work, whatever it was. It could be installing her faucet, whatever the heck it is. <clears throat> um, but I do have a helper today, $54, okay? I didn't fill this out this time. I don't have to, this is for you. Like I said, if you wanna do it, you'd mark out 54 times 1.5. That goes over here, that minus that equals this. Okay, my total cost is $54. Now Wednesday again, I'm on here eight to, 8 to 10, which is two hours on the 14th. So I'm missing what? Who's my helper's name? So I gotta have my helper's name on here. Let's say it was Jesse. All right, and Jesse worked two hours, because that's all I worked, so I know he worked two hours. 
and then I put his rate. I'm paying him twenty dollars an hour, and that's what I write down. So that's that's how these commission sheets work. Um, I did a couple other examples for warranty, for an example. Okay, I had to go back to Jeff Garland's for the thirteenth time. Here's his fifteenth, you know, whatever. That's the date. That's the job number. There's no money on this, but I have warranty two hours. Okay from 10 to 12 on the 14th. There's my two hours down there. It makes it a lot easier for me to add these things up and know where to put them. If it's HPC, whatever, here's an HPC one. Same thing, I put the customer's name, Ryan Day. I'm, let's say I'm doing a, uh, an HPC form for the job number. I'm not collecting any money today. I didn't sell them anything else. That's on me. But two hours HPC, my two hours goes down here. I'm still on Wednesday from 12.30 to 2.30 and my day. Okay, so now I went out and I sold something to John Sow. $2,400, I did the same thing here. Uh, material, 625 times 1.5 is 937. 937 minus 625 shows a 312, which is the markup because I'm not hiding anything. $57 for my helper. Um, 1.35 is 76.95 minus 57. I'm showing what the markup is, $19. So my total costs are in there. My, my total service volume's in here. Okay, watch the camera. <laughs> All right. And then helper named Jason, he has three hours worked on the job, $19 an hour. Wednesday from 2.30 to 5.30 is what we worked. It's three hours. One and a half hours of that was overtime because I worked till, I worked until uh, 5.30 and I started at 7.30, right? So your lunch has to be included in that. You don't include your lunch. Your lunch basically subtracts out. So when you guys work, if you work from 7.30 to 5.30, that's 10 hours, correct? Minus your lunch, your half an hour lunch. That's nine and a half hours, right? So that means you worked eight hours regular time and 1.5 hours of overtime. That's how it has to be done, okay? I'm going to go over this with you, Galen, because you need this for okay. sure. Um, so that's, that's these, these sheets here. That's how I want those filled out. Anybody have any questions? I have a couple questions. Go right ahead. All right, so the way you have it set up is um, if I'm going to get a certain rate from somebody, I discuss that with my lead beforehand, right? Yes. Uh, what if we can't come to an agreement? Do I just walk away? Then you let me know, and I'll send somebody else out to help them at a rate that they can pay, or if they want to pay, then you're not going to be making anything. Okay. You guys have to be fair to one another. This whole thing, team, you know, you guys saw the little thing in the kitchen, what a, what a team is, right? So... Right. All I'm asking is if I could walk away if it's if I can't come to an agreement. Yeah, I mean if you if you're gonna right. be if if you guys are gonna not pay people what they're worth, then they're not gonna help you. Then my well, what if they're asking for more money and they're not worth it? Then you don't pay them. Don't that's kind of why you don't work with yeah, them. And so then you don't work with each other. I mean, if that's what's going to happen. That's the cutthroat part. That's what's going to happen. There is a cutthroat okay part. Because you, you guys, you know what? I may not think I'm worth. Cool, then listen up. We're cool with paying people. I, I may I may think I'm worth fifty dollars now. Don't ask. You know what? That's not what the job's paying. If you're a great helper, oh you're still not worth $30 an hour. You're just a helper. You're just a helper. There's an even more cutthroat part about this. What if I, what if we come to an agreement and they write down something smaller than the team later? Well, okay, so. How do I ever know that? Thanks, bud. Because I'm going to see a number, what your number on one, one piece of paper that you turn in, and I'm going to see his number on another, and then I'm going to call the lead, and I say, hey, listen, he's saying $30. And then I'll have that. If I have to have you guys in my office in the conversation, I'll have that. That would be good. Yeah. But the deal is, is we need to be fair with this because, and it, well, that doesn't mean, oh, I want thirty dollars an hour. That's all I'm willing to work for. Well, right. then go work somewhere else. And all yeah. we're yeah. all we're doing is like a water heater. Yeah. It's gonna take three hours. I mean, if there's money in the job and you're gonna bust your ass and you're gonna get something done for somebody, and normally here's here I've even I've had people do this before in the past. They'll say, hey, you know what? Right now, your rate, your hourly rate is. 20 bucks an hour for an example, okay? If we get this done and knocked it out by the end of today, I'm gonna to pay you $30 an hour or $25 an hour. You can do that because if they're being productive and you don't have to have them back tomorrow and you don't have to go back tomorrow, it's worth paying them an extra 40, 50, 60 bucks, right? Rather than having to go back and you gotta be back there and hold their hand or whatever. But if they're knocking something out and you know who they are, and then I've also had it where a guy says, you know what, it's 500 bucks. You get this done today or if it takes till tomorrow, it's still 500 bucks. I'm not paying you more because that's all this job should take. I do that often. That's, that's totally fine. 
<laughs> all right, so you can do a flat that's rate. That's how we get paid. Because yeah, exactly. that's how you guys that's how we're getting paid. But that's like, how we get paid is like, okay, I make five hundred dollars in one day. If I yeah. if I worked if I if I'm worth the five hundred dollars in that one day. Right. If I'm blowing it and I'm fucking everything up, I don't have the material. I'm breaking shit. Then I come back tomorrow, still the same amount. No, and you take an hour and a half lunch. Two hundred and fifty. You take it every ten minutes. You're taking a break. Yeah. Waiting on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're worth based off of what we're completing. Exactly. As well. So you have to look at the job. So the lead person is going to look at the job. Now, what goes around comes around because now Brett's on a job and he's the lead, right? And the only one that fills out, if, if you're not a lead on this, okay, if you're not the lead on the job, you don't put all the dollars and everything in there. So on your commission sheets, if you're working hourly, you can basically you would put out an hourly sheet. Like I showed, and I, I would put on here, worked with Kevin's, on, I mean, on Kevin's job, worked with Sarah's job, worked with Galen's job, whoever's it is, and then here's the hour, and you can put in the notes what you guys agree to. So then that matches up with the commission person's sheet. So it doesn't mean that you can't have a sheet like this that says, okay, again, Monday I started out, I just had the training from 7.30 to 8, half an hour. And then I did this job for Joni, and I, I did this from uh, whatever time whatever time it was. But then I went to Sarah's job and worked with Sarah. I may have my third sheet may be this. This is the next thing I did. I worked with Sarah for the rest of the day for the next four hours, and it was at X amount of dollars per Sarah, right? So usually it's not a combination of both those sheets? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not, it depends. On oh, some okay. of you guys it will be. That's what I just said. You can have two of the commission sheets, because that's what you did first. The last part of the day, you just worked with Sarah. It's an hourly thing, but whatever the hourly rate should be on here, and that you worked with Sarah. Yeah, because I fill out pretty much both of them, and I thought that you guys would take whichever I made more on and just give me that or the commission Okay, no, so let, let me explain the commission again, because I've, 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 I've done this several <laughs> times. But the way that's <laughs> records of both, like, if I get both, I have to have a time. Okay, now let me explain it. Let me explain it, please. Okay, so the way that your commission works, I keep track of your hours mainly for making sure that, okay, so let's say for an example, you worked 40 hours this week. The minimum you're getting made when you're on commission is $15 an hour. So that's 600 bucks. Okay, so if you did nothing this week, basically, other than doing HPCs and whatever, and you made no money on anything, you're gonna, that's the least amount of money you're going to make. I'm now, getting my input of hours from my hourly timesheet is what you're saying. I'm not, no. Total hours worked from hourly and commission sheets. Where are you getting that from? That's what I'm wondering. On your commission sheets, if you guys can please just listen for a second, because I don't want to repeat myself seven times. If I'm putting your hours here, okay, commission sheet, let's just go back to the commission sheet. All right. Here's Monday. Training. I have a half an hour. I keep track of that. Yeah. That goes in the system. Tuesday. Uh, I'm sorry, this is still Monday. Monday, now I have eight hours. So rea reality is I have a half hour of training, seven and a half of regular time, and a half hour of overtime. Right? Because that's eight and a half total hours. Oh, well. Okay? Oh, yeah, right. I only write yeah, I do that. All of us should understand. If you guys have the hours in here, hours. if you guys have the hours in here, that's how I pay you. That's right. what I'm trying to explain. And we need to understand it too. And it says eight o'clock till four o'clock. I know when you work till in this point. Now, I don't pay around, I'm not paying you guys for standing around time when you're on commission. So if you have no job and you got two hours, you have nothing going on, I'm not paying you for that. You can go have pizza, you can go do whatever you want. Go home, take a nap, I don't care. Job comes in, you go take it later on, you have a two o'clock <laughs> job, you go take it. But that's how, that, that's how I'm keeping track of you. I put hours in every single job that I can estimate. And if you don't put them in, I have to estimate from service type. But if you don't arrive yourself in service type, then you don't. 10-8 yourself after you leave the job, it's really hard for me to do that too. But I have to do the best I can to get, get an estimate here. So that's, that's on Monday. So now on Tuesday, I do the same thing. Oh, you said you worked nine hours, you worked from eight to five. I put that in. It figures out the overtime, everything for me. All I do is put the hours in and it says, okay, if you're over eight hours, it throws the other hour or how much time into overtime. Mm -hmm. If you work over 12 hours, it shows me now, oh, now guess what, you're in a double mm -hmm. time. It shows me all that. So for every job, if you're filling out the hours on here like you're supposed to, that'll be easy for me to tell. Same thing so on you're here. you're not getting paid hourly? 
throughout but, the day, depending on what you're doing, but you are still on the clock. Right. So, so if, if you work 10 hours, it still matters. If you put in, in your hours on hourly, because now you're working for somebody else, Brett, right? Yeah. Okay. And I see your hours, 7.30 to 8, 8 to 11, whatever. I work now from Sarah with Sarah from 11 to 4, okay, I'm, and at this rate. Now, if you're making a rate, because you're, you're basically at this point now making a $30 an hour or whatever, or a or flat fee. She says, I'm paying you 500 bucks. Well... Unless you're going into over eight hours a day, I'm not paying the overtime because it's you're basically on commission. That gets put down at the bottom, mm -hmm. job number, whatever it is, you're getting paid 500 bucks. <laughs> you're getting paid $30 an hour times that that five hours, just, whatever right, it is, you're right? Anyways. Right. So if you work over eight hours, though, in a day or over 40 hours in a week, I still have to pay overtime. So I have to see that, that you worked overtime. And I don't know that if you don't put the hours that you worked. So then I'm guessing, oh. mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's how I do that. So you guys have to put in the hours that you worked on every job, every part of the job, the training. It doesn't matter what it is. If they're sitting around time, you had nothing, then there'll be a gap. They might say from 2 to 4, I had nothing. But guess what? From 4 to 7, I did. So I still maybe got 9 hours for the day, but I just I had a gap time, and I went and had pizza, or I just went, and went to the beach and waited until my call because I had nothing going on. I don't care. I cleaned my truck out. That's, that's up to you guys. You really want some pizza, huh? Well, some people do. <laughs> I don't eat very many carbs, so yeah, I, I, I do like pizza. <laughs> um, so we there it is. Yeah. yeah. And the truth comes out. So, if you guys are filling that out, it makes it really easy for me to make sure you, I put in the hours, and then here, so let me explain the commission and the hourly. So now, <laughs> let's say, Brett, that most of this week you worked with somebody else uh, as a helper. Yeah. All right. And you're making whatever that rate is. Sometimes it may be 20, sometimes it's 50, um, or 18, sometimes it's 30, whatever it is. Okay, whatever that rate is. Now, I'm going to put those, anything that's on a specific person gets put to a job in the bottom. It's going to say job number and then that total amount. But the rest of the week, all you did was HPCs. You didn't really get anything else going on. And you worked, so HPCs pays at $15 an hour. And then you worked uh, on a warranty job. Those are $25 an hour. So those are going to show up under HPCs, and, and the hours are going to show under HPCs and under warranty. Okay? So, that, so I know what rate to pay you and, and so on. Now let's say in addition to those HPCs and warranties, you worked another 12 hours. Okay? And it was a commission job, but it was upside down. You, you screwed something up. You had to go back and get another part. This didn't work. That didn't work. There's no money in the commission job. Okay? But you're fit, you're, so at this point, that's when I look at what are you going to get paid more? I put your hours in. You had 12 hours at $15 an hour equals X, right? And then I look at the commission and I say, okay, this job was a $1,000 job, but he has $700 in parts. There's no money in this. I mean, basically he made you take everything out with the markup, there's a hundred bucks minus, so, and I look at what your commission would be in percentage, and I go, okay, guess what? He made more hourly on that job over, for the week, overall now, because everything else that you got paid from, from working on somebody else is on the bottom. But now on the top, I'm going to say, okay, guess what? I'm not going to pay him that commission because there's nothing there. He worked 12 hours. I'm going to pay him the 12 hours at $15 an hour. And then I'm going to add the rest of the stuff together. Your HBCs, your warranty, and whatever commission you got from working with other people. All right, my last question then would be, if I work an eight-hour day and I work two jobs that are both commission jobs and I have to fill out two commission sheets correctly, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. But do I break it up on each commission sheet, how many hours I work yes. at each one? Okay. Yes. So I don't put full eight hours on my commission sheet every single time? No. Only what I work, because that's what I've been doing. You they can have per job. Per job. Sarah, per Sarah job. will have five sheets for Monday. Mm -hmm. One's for training. I worked half an hour. Second job, I worked for two hours. Third job, I worked for two hours. Then I was there for an hour. Then I was there for four hours. She'll write out every single job, all the hours. On the commission sheet? On the commission sheet. Yeah, because you still get overtime. Like you said, if you work 10 hours, by, the, you know, by law, you still right. get that two-hour overtime no matter what. And I'm paying you guys that at twenty two fifty an hour, so it's it, money. you it's need to write money. it down. It's all money. And I, I don't want to rip anybody dollars. off. That's not my goal. But it's like, I, I'm not going to just start throwing overtime and guessing, did they work it or not, when you guys aren't even right. filling out their darn sheets <laughs> correctly. Yeah, yeah. And no, if I you ever have a question, all you got to do is come ask me. I'll sit down with you. I'll go over it. But I, it's like, in the middle of payroll on Monday, I'm just trying to get payroll done now. 
I don't have time to, you know, if I happen to see you, I might ask you a question or I might call you because I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. But I can't go through every day and say, okay, what time did you start? What time did you, because you're not putting them on there. It's like, I don't have time for all that. Yeah, most people. I, I went ahead and started adding time to the times that I did everything too. That way, it makes it a little bit easier if I can. Yeah, I mean, guys, it makes it—it it just makes it so much easier if you fill it out every single. Mm -hmm. Like I said, don't wait till Monday morning and try fill these out. If you, do, you just have these with you in your snap pack, you fill it out on the job. Mm -hmm. Next day, yeah. next job you go to, you fill it out. You're done within <laughs> seconds. I mean, literally, you're done within seconds. This sheet takes. I mean, I wrote these up. It took me to do all of them for a whole week. It took me half an hour. And I mean, I was just making stuff up, which was hard because I'm trying. And then I had to do all the addition and subtraction on some of them. But reality is, if you're doing it right there, you know if you got money today. And here's the thing. Here's another part of this on the commission sheet. So let's say that I go into a job today and I just give an estimate. So this is what's going to happen where I'm going to see your hourly and I'm going to compare and so on. I gave a lot of estimates this week. I didn't get I didn't get any money, so zero dollar money, you know I, I can put on their estimate if I want to put on the estimate on there only, but I'm doing the job next week because I she finally called me back next week, that's mm -hmm. why, so now let's say I had no commission this week, okay all I did is gave like 15 estimates, a couple of HPCs, couple warranties, whatever, so you get paid on your warranty, you get paid on your HPC, and then you're probably going to get paid hourly now because you have no commission mm -hmm. for this week. But now next week, those, out of all those estimates, I just sold two, two estimates and said, hey, I want the work done. Now, so you already got paid for the, um, for the hourly on that. Now you're going in next week and doing the job, and you're getting paid your commission once you close it out. So, so there's a reason why it's done this way. Yeah. No matter what, your hours have to be accounted for in California exactly. by law. You I have to keep track of the best that I can. by the book, because other companies, they won't. They yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to pay you guys what what what, what, like, what I can. You got two dollars today. That's right. right. You work forty hours. But you're there are and there are. She's right. There's companies like that that they do commission, <laughs> and it's like they don't even keep track of your hours. I'm trying to do everything legally above board. Make sure everybody's happy the way I can. But selling is part of what you have to do as a commission employee. That's why you commission. If you don't, you have to have somebody sell for you. So that's why we have the channel leader or comfort advisors that do that. So anytime you're on a job and you don't feel comfortable with the price or giving that price to the customer, or you see that you every time you do give a customer or give an estimate, you're walking away. If you leave the door without, without getting a signature, that means you're not a very good salesperson and that's okay. I want you to know it's okay. If you can do the work, that's the most important part because we can get people to sell for you. That's easy. That's really easy for people who, who love to sell, and that's that's their whole game. They 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 just enjoy it. Kevin enjoys it. Sarah enjoys it. Brian enjoys it. We got three people now that can sell. Let them sell. Call me on the phone. Kevin calls me on the phone, guys, in front of the customer. Second voice is very important. It's oh, yeah. I mean, you don't even have to have them there all the time. And and I'll and I'm right there. I know he's got me on speakerphone. And I'm just saying, yeah, Kevin, I, you know, I wouldn't go under that house until they try that out. You need to get, you know, serve pro out there, blah, blah, blah. I've done that. Because Kevin knows the answer. He's just getting validation from the manager in the office. Hey, let me call my manager. That's what Kevin does. I've done that with you too on a price. It's, oh, yeah. it's not hard, guys. Yeah. 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 It's not hard. Hey, and, and what you can do is you, you look like the good guy by doing this. Say, hey, you know what? <clears throat> let me call my manager and see if I can get a better price. Because the customer's trying to get that better price, right? Say, so, hey, Alan, yeah, so I am just gave out here with, with Mrs. Jones, and um, I gave her a price for a research pump. $1,250 is what the book says, or what, you know, what it comes out with everything. <clears throat> She's saying that that's kind of high. Is there any way we can give her a discount? And then I may, I may on the phone say, well, you know what, I just looked at Mrs. Jones. She's not an HPC customer. Why don't we make her an HPC customer? It's $189. We can check her furnace and HVAC, and we can give her you know, annual flushes on her water heater. And that'll save her 15% right off the top. So now we just basically that covers the cost of the HPC. So all I did was really adjust something a little bit, but you got the HPC and we have opportunities to get out there three other times mm -hmm. in the year. That's simple stuff. It's really easy to do. I have no problem doing it on the phone. And now we have a customer says, well, that sounds like a good deal. You're gonna come out and check this, this, and that, you know, for free. Yeah, we come out and check them, we do a tune-up, we do this, we do that, and then, you know, then the customer says, well, there's some value there. So it's not hard to do. 
But sometimes on the bigger jobs, you have to have somebody actually come out to the house. So that's when Kevin comes out, Sarah comes out, Brian comes out, and they upsell them. And they upsell them to, you know, you also need angle stops, you need a pressure regulator, you know, you got all kinds of stuff going on here. Let's check out this house. I mean, you haven't had these these pipes are backing up, whatever. And now you get a something that might have been a walk away, and you just got two, three grand. I mean, that's how it works. Because what is our goal? Our goal is to take care of the customer. Make sure that all of their systems are up and running properly and that when we leave that customer, they feel like they got value because we're going to give them the service. We're going to make sure we clean it better than when we, it was there when we got there. You know, we're going to take care of our customers. But show them value. Show them we care about them. And every time we go out, we, you know, we're building a relationship, building a relationship. And that's how we keep long-term customers. So. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so anybody have questions on these, on these timesheets? I want to make sure they're clear because I, I want to start seeing them filled out properly and keep them in order. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you have Monday, 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 it should be by time. 7.30 to whatever, this time to that time and so on. And then it just goes on. So that way I know what you worked, where you worked, who you worked with. Or staple them together at least. Yeah, yeah and, and no, normally they, you paper clip or staple them together because Tina goes through them. And so another part on the commission sheets. So let's say that Galen goes out today and he sells a job, mm -hmm. right? He sells it today, but he doesn't do the work today, right? I want it done next Monday. He collects Monday. Right. So to, he's still going to put that he went to the job and however long he went to the job today hours. and did the estimate, put the hours and everything on there. But then he's going to go next Monday when he closes it. He's going to have that same job and that same customer. He's going to put the money on there, the parts. All that stuff's going to be on there. I'm missing purchase orders. Okay, so anytime, if you guys don't know, if you're new and you don't know how to do a purchase order, all you do is call in to me or to dispatch. We'll put the purchase order for it. When you get something purchased, you need to have a purchase order in. And the amount needs to match what the invoice is. Don't be putting in these automatic, oh, it's 50 bucks about. I know it's going to be about 50 bucks. I've been doing this a long time. And then it comes out to $53.87. Because now I'm looking in the system for, I can search by PO amount. There's no 53.87. But then I got to go in a range and I got to try to figure dates out. And it's like a mess trying to figure it out. I need to have purchase orders. A purchase order is also for stuck, a truck stock. Stuck truck. Truck stock. So if you have you know, a couple angle stops and supplies in your truck. You know, we need to put a price in there. If you don't have a price, you can ask me and I'll give you a price because I have a price for everything. <clears throat> Basically, it's just our cost. We just put that in there as a material, but a purchase order goes in. Truck stock, angle stops and supply lines, two of each. And then I know I, I can put the price in. But we need to have a purchase order for everything. Okay? Any more questions? Sorry, I went a few minutes late. That's it. Cool. Right, let's get out there and get to work.